Good morning, everyone. Our readings for this morning are Psalm 103, Old Testament reading from the book of Exodus, chapter 3, verses 1 through 12, and the New Testament reading, the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verses 23 to 31. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We have come together as the family of God to in our Father's presence to offer him praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive his holy word, to bring before him the needs of the world and to ask his forgiveness of our sins, to seek his grace, that through his Son, Jesus Christ, we may give ourselves to his service. So let us worship and praise him. Lord, open our lips that we may glorify and praise your name. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. O shout to the Lord in triumph, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his face with songs of joy. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Come into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his holy name. For the Lord is good. His loving mercy is forever. His faithfulness throughout all generations. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. So in a few moments of silence, let us call to mind and confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought, word and deed, and in what we have left undone, for the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord. Forgive us all that has passed, and grant that we may serve you in the newness of life, to the glory of your name. O Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and keep us in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So we read Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always chide, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. As a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him. For he knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are like grass. He flourishes like a flower of the field. For the wind passes over it, and it's gone, and its place knows it no more. But the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him, and his righteousness to children's children, to those who keep his covenant and remember to do his commandments. The Lord has established his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom rules over all. 
Bless the Lord, O you his angels, you mighty ones who do his word, obeying the voice of the word. Bless the Lord, all his hosts, his ministers who do his will. Bless the Lord, all his works, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. So the first reading is taken from the book of Exodus, chapter 3, beginning at verse 1. Now, Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian, and he led his flock to the west side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. He looked, and behold, the bush was burning, yet it was not consumed. Moses said, I will turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses, and he said, Here I am. Then he said, Do not come near. Take your sandals off your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. And he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters. I know their sufferings. And I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them out of the land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to a place of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. And now, behold, the cry of the people of Israel has come to me, and I have also seen the oppression with which the Egyptians oppressed them. Come. I will send you to Pharaoh that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? He said, I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you that I have sent you. When you have brought the people of e out of Egypt, you shall serve God on this mountain. Hear the word of the Lord. And we say in the song of Zechariah, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy on our ancestors, and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called a prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Second reading is from Hebrews chapter 11, beginning at verse 23. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden for three months by his parents, because they saw that the child was beautiful, and they were not afraid of the king's edict. By faith, Moses, when he was grown up, refused to be called a son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to be mistreated with the people of God than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He considered the reproach of Christ greater wealth than the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking to the reward. By faith he left Egypt, 
not being afraid of the anger of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. By faith he kept the Passover and sprinkled blood, so that the destroyer of the firstborn might not touch them. By faith the people crossed the Red Sea as on dry land, but the Egyptians, when they attempted to do the same, were drowned. By faith the walls of Jericho fell down after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith Rahab the prostitute did not perish with those who were disobedient, because she had given a friendly welcome to the spies. Hear the word of the Lord. Now I sometimes wonder why the Lord is so patient with us. He made us in his image, but that doesn't seem to be enough for us. We want more. What do we want more of? Excitement? To be our own boss? And yet the Lord takes all our nonsense and still reaches out to us. Yes, he's told us that he will punish us if we misbehave. An example of this is when Judah was exiled to Babylon for 70 years. But he sent a number of prophets to put them straight before he took that step. But what about us today? Do we, the world at large, pay any more attention to him now than the people did in Old Testament times? In the psalm we read, The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. And for those of us who accept Jesus' teaching, this has been our experience. In the reading from Exodus, we heard the beginning of a discussion between God and Moses. God had brought Jacob and his family out of Canaan during a famine, and under Joseph's wing had settled them in part of Egypt that the Egyptians were not using at the time. Here they had grown so strong that they had become a threat to the Egyptians. So the Egyptians had put institutions in place to dominate them. Now we all know the story. They cried out to God who raised up a leader to get them out of the situation. But Moses was not the typical leader that we might look to today. He was, we're told, he was slow of speech. And he ducked and dived all he could. But God countered every argument and eventually Moses acceded. To God's will. And God made one of those promises that mean that a number of steps have to be taken in faith before it will come to fruition. Moses was told that once he had taken what he had been, once he had done what he'd been told, he would worship God on this mountain, that's Horeb, where they were. In the reading from the book of Hebrews, we heard an overview of Moses' actions as he led the Israelites out, of Egypt, Israelites out of Egypt. Like Moses, we too have God's promise that he will be with us. And like Moses, do we have the faith to know that he is with us even before he has shown himself to us? Are we able to take God at his word and to step out on the path that he has for us? J.I. Packer, in his book, Knowing God, notes that there are five foundational principles of our knowledge of God which will determine our course. These are, and I quote, 1. God has spoken to man and the Bible is his word to make us wise unto salvation. And the second, God is Lord and King over his world. He rules all things for his own glory, displaying his perfections in all that he does in order that men and angels may worship and adore him. The third, God is Saviour, active in sovereign love through the Lord Jesus Christ to rescue believers from the guilt and the power of sin, to adopt them as his sons and daughters, and to bless them accordingly. Fourthly, God is triune. There are within the Godhead three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the work of salvation is one in which all three act together. The Father proposing redemption, the Son securing it, and the Spirit applying it. And lastly, godliness means responding to God's revelation in trust and obedience, faith and worship, prayer and praise, submission and service. 
life must be seen and lived in the light of God's word. This and nothing else is true religion. Within these five principles we should ask ourselves, what is our aim in responding to these things? What do I intend to do with my knowledge of God once I have it? Now, it is possible to know too much about God. This muddies the waters and prevents us from seeing the simple truth about God's caring for us. Jesus teaches that we should come as little children. A truth we don't grasp easily is that a little knowledge of God is worth more than a great deal of knowledge about Him. Too much knowledge about God can obscure His basic message of salvation. We can read lots of books about God, but what we need is to spend time with Him. It is also possible to know much about godliness without knowing much about God. There are lots of books on godliness, but we need to develop a personal relationship with God to get to know Him. We need to meet Him in prayer and in our lives. We find the clearest description of the effects that knowing God has on us in the book of Daniel, in the Bible. <clears throat> One effect is that we have great energy for God. Another is that those who know God have great thoughts of God. A third is that those who know God show boldness for God. And the fourth is that those who know God have great contentment in God. It's worth reading the book of Daniel to see how each of these plays out in the lives of the people discussed. Jesus has fallen over backwards to show us his love. He has done everything for us. All we need to do is to respond to this great love. There is no cost beyond our response. And all we need to do is to pray, Thank you, Jesus. I will live my life for you. And if you have trouble with this response, let's take it to the Lord in prayer and ask him, why am I having trouble responding to you like this? And let's say the song of the church. O oh God, we praise you and acclaim you as the Supreme Lord, everlasting Father. All the earth worships you. All the angels, the heavens, and the angelic powers, all the cherubim, seraphim, continually cry to you, Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of the majesty of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Holy Church throughout the world acclaims you the Father of infinite majesty, your true and only Son, worthy of worship, also the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. O Christ, you are the King of glory. You are the everlasting Son of the Father. When you took it upon yourself to deliver man, you did not disdain the virgin's womb. Having overcome the sting of death, you opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You sit at the right hand of God, in the glory of the Father. We believe that you will come to be our judge. We therefore beg you to help your servants whom you have redeemed with your precious blood. Let them be numbered with your saints in everlasting glory. We say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. 
Amen. So let us pray. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. And we say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And the collect set for today, Almighty God, you have poured upon us the new light of your incarnate word. Grant that this light enkindled in our hearts may shine forth in our lives through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life, to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your servants, from the assaults of our enemies, that we may trust in, our, in your defence and not fear the power of our any adversaries. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Eternal Father, by whose power we are created, by whose love we are redeemed, guide and strengthen us by your Spirit, that we may give ourselves to your service and live this day in love with you and one another. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face to shine on us and be gracious to us. And the Lord look kindly on us and give us peace. So we say the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us all forever. Amen.